So you've got an EP133 KO2 from Teenage Engineering, or actually any other standalone synthesizer sequencer with a MIDI capability or a MIDI controller. And you've got a modular synth system. Maybe you're wondering how you might be able to get the power of your modular involved in that simple but awesome track on your KO2. Well, maybe it's time you get your hands on a MIDI to CV interface for your modular rack. I use the Univer Inter from Noise Engineering, and that's what I'll show here. The Univer Inter lets me connect my EP133 to my modular rack so I can take advantage of specialized sounds, effects, controls, and other awesome money pit time killers on my rack and sync my rack output more generally with the simple ideas that I've sketched on the EP133. The Univer Inter is an 8 output MIDI interface which takes in MIDI from an external device and translates it into, well, 8 things of your choosing. And it can have 16 outputs if you have two of them chained. Now the key to MIDI conversations between two instruments is to get both the sender and the receiver talking the same language. So you need to set up your sending device, the KO2 in my case, to send music data on the right MIDI channels. And you have to set up your receiving device, the Univer Inter in my case, to listen to the right data on the right channels. Now, is the EP133 KO2 the best MIDI controller for modular? No, not in my view. But if you have it and you love it, you may want to use it for this purpose, like I did. Before we get started with the actual devices and settings to let those two devices talk to each other, let's review a quick visual. The EP133 will be sending MIDI signals to the Univer Inter, so we must connect the two with a TRS MIDI cable. It's basically a TRS MIDI A, and it's a stereo cable that you need, not a mono cable for all you modular people with thousands of mono cables hanging around. Find a stereo cable. Now the MIDI connects to the MIDI out on the EP133. It's a little hard to see in this picture, so I've enlarged it. And we will need the Univer Inter connected to the computer so that we can set it up, but let's not worry about that yet. Now on the EP133, you'll set up two general things, and one of those might repeat a few times. And how you do this depends on a few decisions you need to make first, and yes, you can change your mind later. First, will you control the tempo, the clock, of the modular with the EP133? Second, what pads do you want to use to send note and gate information to your modular? And third, what other things on your modular system might you want to control using the EP133? In this case, yes, we want to control the clock of the modular with the EP133. So we'll want to send clock information. So on the EP133 to send clock information, you have to go to System Settings. That's Shift plus the Erase button to get to System Settings and set the MIDI clock out. We hit plus till we get to MIDI, and this is the Enter button. We get to clock, we hit Enter again, and we can see we have it set for out, which means we'll get sync and run information available to the Univer Inter if we accept that on the configuration of the Univer Inter. Second, we'll have to select the pads we want to send. So we'll set the MIDI channel on each pad we want to use, and we'll do that using the sound edit. That's shift plus the sound button. We choose the pads we want to look at. So I'll go to, I'll start with B and this pad here. And again, since I'm in sound edit, it's got different settings. So I go from sound to trim to envelope to timing to MIDI. And now I can see this pad is set for channel one. If we look at other pads, these are all off. But that's set for channel one. That's going to be my base uh, notes, basically, and gates. I'm going to reuse that in my modular as base notes and gates. Now let's go to my leads. I have two leads set up here, one on channel 2 and one on channel 4. And again, the other pads are not being sent. And I am also sending from my drums my kick on channel 5 and my snare on channel 7. And that's going to align to the output 5 and 7 on the Univer Inter. So those are the signals I'm going to be sending, and that's all set up now from the EP133 to send 
the MIDI data so that it can be interpreted and translated into CV and gate data on the modular. So that's the sending setup from the KO2 EP133. Now notice all we really do on the sending device is declare the channel. All the information that is available will be sent on that channel and it is up to the receiving device to listen to just the data it wants. So now let's focus on the receiving side, on the Univer Inter. To set up the Univer Inter, you go to the Customer Portal app. That means you log in to the noise engineering site, that's noiseengineering.us. Once you're logged in, you go to the Customer Portal and you go to the Univer Inter tab. Now, by the way, the customer portal is where so much noise engineering magic happens. It's where free swappable versions of firmware on their Versio, Legio, and Alia platforms exist. And it's where we set up the Univer Inter. So go to the Univer Inter tab. There are presets up top to actually give you quick settings for the whole device. We're not gonna use that right now. What we're gonna do, you can see that my device which is called JR Song One is connected and it's got a preset name here, but I want to load the configuration that's on the physical device, which is connected via USB right now into this app. So I click load from device and now it's got all the settings that I've got set already. So we can see how I configured it. We'll go through all of the outputs here that are loaded now from the device. My first output port is actually set to channel one, and it will be pulling, filtering from the MIDI data that is sent, and then sending to output one, the note and pitch data. This is what I'll use for my baseline, actually, the pitch. We're gonna jump to output three, which is where I have also on channel one, the note data, but this time it's gate. So I'm taking the gate and the pitch, on output three and output one. And this is what I'll use for my base oscillator on my modular. I'll send the gate information and the pitch information. On output two, I'm going to be sending note and pitch information from channel two. On output four, I'm doing the same note and pitch information, but from channel one, which will mimic the baseline. On output five and seven, I'll be taking gate information off channel five and channel seven. And I often do that where I align the channel numbers to the output so it's easy to remember. And that's what I'll use for my kick on channel five out of output five and my snare out of channel seven out of output seven. Output six and eight, I'm actually using sync data. And this is going to help control the modular unit beyond just my oscillators. It's really set up for timing and for starting and stopping sequences. The sync run data on output six will help synchronize when I hit play on the EP133, whether it's to start it or to stop it. Output eight will give me clock data, which is actually the tempo from the EP133 that I can now use in my clock or across my whole modular unit. Both of these elements, out of output six and output eight will go to my Pamela's new workout module in my modular to start and stop it and to set the tempo. Now on the modular side, I have to do something with all those signals coming out of the Univer Inter, which converted MIDI to CV and gate information. I connect all those to oscillators or other modules that I decided to control. Output one and three, will go to an oscillator that is base. And in this case, it'll go to my cursus at Teratos Presido, the gate and the pitch inputs. Output two will go to my Laquelica Teratos, just the pitch. Output four will go to the cursus at Teratos, again, just the pitch. And output five and seven will go to the ALM squid sample to play some drums. Now, I also wanted to hear the audio from the EP133, so I decided to grab the EP133 audio from its output into my mixer on the modular. I use the Zermixa module to take that stereo signal in using separate left and right channels from a split stereo signal out of the EP133, and I recombine them into one channel on the Zermixa. Lots of ways I could have done this and lots of ways you could do this, but let's not get too into the modular side here. But just know that I can control the audio of both the EP133, all of the signals coming out, 
and from each of the elements that I've got coming from modules into my mixer. So now I have my original audio from the KO2 on channel five of my mixer, and I have other elements on the first four channels, and I can mix them as I like. I can also pass the whole mess into effects and other modules on my modular. So there you have it. How to turn a perfectly simple sequence on the KO2 into a complicated mess on a huge modular rack. I kid, I mean, it's true, but the point is, I now have control and options that I simply didn't have before without having to rewrite the sequence that I sketched on the KO2. I can now play it on my modular, make changes as I want, and easily control it from one device.